Alrighty, I finally got my base pedals uh, adjusted and put back onto my RT2 console. So everything is uh, put together and everything's working now with the exception of the very highest uh, G note on my bass pedals. Uh, that, that G all the way on the right hand side. It's got some mangled contacts so it's disabled for now until I can uh, get that fixed. But uh, it's been quite a bit of work fixing everything on the uh, console. It's got new felts. The tone wheel generator has been recapped. The vibrato line box has all new capacitors in it. I had to change most of the capacitors in the uh, pedal solo system because they were so far out of spec I couldn't even couldn't even tune that. The uh, pedal solo system is uh, one part of a Hammond console that does require tuning. If you have a regular Hammond console with no pedal solo unit you don't have to worry about that but uh, when you've got the pedal solo system it, it's got an oscillator that has to be has to be tuned and if the capacitors get too far out of tolerance uh, you, you can't really tune it so had to change a lot of those. Here's the uh, control panel for the pedal solo system there's a tablet for one f or one foot and two foot tones. Here's one for four foot. Here's eight foot. Here's sixteen foot. This is called mute, but it's really like a high uh, high frequency filter. And then there's two different thirty two foot stops, which are really low sounding notes. And then this uh, tablet uh, turns the uh, system off and on. So you can select various combinations of these, any combination that you want. And you can turn the pedal solo system off and on with this just by pushing this one, one pedal down. And then this, this is uh, one switch down, I should say. And then this knob here is a blend knob. This controls the output of the pedal solo system. And then it's blended back in with uh, the rest of the stuff coming from the tone mill generator. The output of my RT2 console comes over to here and runs into the that Lexicon MX300 effects processor. I don't know if you can read what it says right now, but it says large hall. I have a reverb program on there. Large hall reverb program. And so it goes through there, and then it goes down into that crown power amp. That's one of those Class D digital power amps, 500 watts per channel RMS power. And uh, I have it set up in crossover mode so that the left channel outputs the low frequencies, and the right channel outputs the high frequencies. And I have the crossover programmed at 800 hertz. And so the two outputs from that Crown Power Amp go down there and go to that Hammond HR40 tone cabinet. I'll, I'll explain more about that in a second. I'll give you a closer look at that. So anyway, here's the front of the RT2 console. I'm going to stop the video and go around and show you the back. Here's the back side of the uh, RT2 console. It's, it's a little different layout than some of them. Here's the uh, matching transformer, upper manual preset panel, lower manual preset panel. Here's part of the tone wheel generator. This is the preamp. This is a type AO10B preamp. In this wooden box hanging from the underside here is the uh, delay line for the vibrato. You have the AC line panel. The square box there is the run motor. And a round can is the scanner. Under here is the back side of the pedal solo control tablets that you saw in the front. Here's the wires that come down and 
connect. This is the pedal solo chassis right here. As you can see, it's got it's got more tubes in it than the preamp does. And uh, it's got knobs here for a coarse and, and fine tuning of that. There's a master oscillator in there that's got to be attuned to uh, match up with the, to be in tune with the tone wheel generator. And over here is the uh, box that contains the inductors that work with the pedal solo system. So when you push on a bass pedal, a certain number of those inductors are connected together. And that, in conjunction with that chassis right there, generates the pedal solo tones. I'll demonstrate those in a minute. So that's the back side of a uh, Hammond RT2 console. Here's the back side of the uh, Hammond HR40 tone cabinet. It's got three, six, nine, ten inch bass speakers. Normally they're all wired in parallel, but I rewired them uh, to give me, uh, I don't know, somewhere between three and four ohms, I forget exactly, of a load impedance for the bass channel on that Crown Power Amp. There's nine speakers, and if you look right there in the corner, there's a uh, 8 ohm 10 watt power resistor which gives me 10 loads that I can connect together and I, like I said it gives me somewhere between 3 and 4 ohms I think on the uh, on the base. Underneath there are the two 12 inch trouble speakers I'm not using those instead of that I'm sending the output to this Leslie rotor that I've got sitting on top of there. You can see it's uh, it's running right now on a slow slow speed. And uh, I've been meaning to put that in a nicer cabinet, but that's as far as I've gotten with that. And one of these days I may actually build a do a home built Leslie uh, cabinet myself. I need to get the lower rotor. But anyway, that's what it looks like from the front. And I uh, showed you the back. The back's missing the uh, tube, the tube amp, and uh, normally there's a real tall reverb, uh, spring oil-filled spring reverb unit in there. That stuff wasn't working. So instead of fixing that, I decided just to take it out. I, st I still have it, but I decided to take it out and go with a modern power amp. Here's a quick demo of the uh, Hammond built-in vibrato. I've got a Leslie rotor on top of my Hammond tone cabinet, but I have it turned off right now. So this is just straight, straight sound from the console. Here's vibrato level one. Okay, here's vibrato level two. Here's what the ham and tone cabinet sounds like with the with the Leslie rotor on top. It's crossed over at 800 hertz. That's with 
nothing. Here it is on a slow, slow corral position. Sounds like going from a stop to the fast speed. The control tablets for the pedal solo system are over here on the right hand side of these RT2 consoles. The, um, the pedal solo system generates six octaves worth of, worth of tones. One foot, two foot, four foot, eight foot, sixteen foot, and thirty two foot tones. Here's what it sounds like back to just the uh, regular tone wheel. Let's see, I'll just play, I'll play this low G here. That's with the uh, two bass draw bars pulled all the way out to eight and eight. Okay, that's the G. Now here's what you get with your one foot and two foot are combined. Here's what the forefoot sounds like. foot and the 16 foot and I leave all the other ones turned off. Sometimes I'll use the mute. The mute. Here's, what, here's what the mute does. It's still in there but it's the high frequencies are rolled off. solo system. Right now I've got it turned off and the bass draw bars I've got both of them pulled out all the way to eight. So here's what the regular tone wheel bass sounds uh, sound like. <laughs> solo turned on. For this I'm just going to turn on the 8 foot and the 16 foot. That's with it on, with it off. There's a low E flat.
fix ups and uh, hopefully you get hear a little bit about how the pedal solo system sounds and how my console sounds after I change the capacitors in the tone wheel generator. I've got a quieter registration down here. solo system turned up pretty far it's not it's not turned up all the way but it's it's pretty high 